Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch Want and thanks for logging on. Today, we're looking at the Zenith El Primero Stratos Flyback Striking 10th Limited Edition, one of only 500 made. This watch is 45.5 millimeters in Zenith's signature Alcron alloy. And it is, like all watches featured on our YouTube channel, actual inventory available for immediate purchase and delivery on our retail website, watchyouwant.com. And if you like getting the latest news, views, and reviews in video format on a daily basis, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Watch You Want Inc. Now, fit comes first, so before I delve too deeply into the features and history of this El Primero, let's talk a little bit about how a big watch wears on a small wrist. And my wrist, 6 and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, gives a good sense of how this 45 and a half millimeter broad and 15 millimeter thick Stratos flyback looks on a normal wrist maybe a little bit below average in size. My wrist is nevertheless pretty average in shape. That is flattish across the top, oval in cross section. But you can see that even if your wrist is a little bit undersized as mine is, this big watch wears well. First and foremost because the lugs are short. You can see from overhead it doesn't overlap. It doesn't essentially escape the constraints of the edge of my wrist and look oversized in any inherent sense. If you like the big watch look, you're going to like the look of this watch on your wrist. If you're not into huge watches, you'll probably pass on this one, but the bottom line is, from an ergonomic standpoint, it absolutely works, so wear with confidence. The other key there is that the watch, in addition to being fairly thin for its width, is exceptionally light. Now, Alcron is Zenith's proprietary alloy of aluminum and titanium. They are a complete manufacturer, so not only do they make the movement, but they also make the case itself, and they're responsible for the metallurgy. So this watch wears almost as light on the wrist as something like forged carbon. So although it's big, close your eyes, and most of that size disappears. It's very wieldy. It's exactly the kind of watch you want to wear if you like the look of a big watch, but not the encumbrance of mass. Very comfortable. And that's aided by a superb, partially bolstered textile stitched strap. And I say partially bolstered because it is far thicker with multiple layers of textile at the root near the lugs. And then it tapers off and thins out as it moves away for flexibility on the soft underside of the wrist. It's an ergonomic triumph for that reason, but also because like many of the latest Zenith straps, it features a superb and very durable natural rubber undercoating, so everything that actually touches the skin is very silky. And the clasp is up to that standard. Now, Zenith being a manufacturer, they built the clasp too. So everything has a coherence in terms of engineering, design, and finishing that speaks to the fact that this watch essentially comes all of a piece from one source. Double deployant, so it'll fit easier if you are trying to latch it onto a smaller wrist, but it also features the twin trigger feature that I like, for security on the wrist. So unlike a friction fit or single trigger, it can't accidentally come loose. Now the nice thing is because it is so low in profile, it essentially looks like a pin buckle. So it keeps that low pin buckle profile when it's closed. You hardly know that it's a deployant. I like that. Unobtrusive, it leaves the watch itself to be the star of the show. Alcron alloy, very scratch resistant, very light. Zenith goes one better with the bezel. Now it's one of Zenith's first uses of ceramic in watchmaking, so it has incredible resilience. It's virtually as hard as sapphire, so the bezel itself with all of these engraved relieved calibrations and numerals is going to look good 5, 10, 15 years down the line. The El Primero movement itself has been a star since 1969, so it's nice to know that the watch, which is clearly built to last, is going to look as good on the outside as that El Primero performs on the inside. I also want to emphasize that although this is not a dive watch, strictly speaking, it does feature unidirectional action on the bezel, the 0 to 60 minute calibration, a loomed pearl at the index at 12, and despite being more of an aviation watch, it does have 100 meter water resistance. So if you wanted a one sports watch to do it all, between the 100 meter water resistance, the unidirectional bezel, the chronograph, automatic winding, and the water resistant textile rubberized strap, this is your go-to, so it gives you a lot of options and versatility. Now the dial is the canvas on which this watch's key complication plays out in public. Before I delve into that, I want to talk a little bit about the features of the dial. Now it features a graduated step down from the bezel, which is a little bit dished, to the dial base itself and then the sub-registers further sunken in guilloche within the dial. But you step down from that bezel to a calibrated minute track on the outside, but 
there's a rehot metallized and linear brushed with a linear metallic grain. You can just see it. It's shiny right under my finger. You can see its arc around the dial. And that's calibrated 1 to 10 seconds all the way around with incremental fractions of seconds also listed on its calibration. And the reason for that is the striking temp. This watch is reason for being. Not just an Alpromero, it features one of the few truly original innovations in the portrayal of chronograph time in the modern era. So you get the ability to read each individual beat of this movement. It's a high beat movement, 10 beats per second, 36,000 vibrations per hour, but each one of those beats of the escapement becomes a broad sweep of the dial. I'll show you what I mean because it's hard to describe, but bam, there it goes. Now you see 10 seconds elapsed for, elapsed for every circuit of the dial. Now instead of trying to read a tenth of a second within the constraints of a small calibrated second on the dial, those 10 seconds allow each of those individual beats to be expressed as a large sweep of the hand. And you can read the partial seconds off that Rayhot calibration. So now I have a watch that can resolve to one tenth of a second, and I have a way of practically reading one tenth of a second on the calibrations. It's a solution to a key problem of a high beat movement, and it's visually spectacular. And it gets better because not only is this striking tenth almost like a foudroyant, but it still features the flyback complication. So the watch's hand is flying in both directions, returning to the zero, and then restarting instantly with the single touch of the reset button. And because it's an El Primero, it's built like a tank. This is a true workhorse movement. While some multi-complication high horology pieces require kid glove handling, with this one, just use common sense. There's a reason the El Primero powered the Rolex Cosmograph Daytona for a generation. Rolex essentially admitted that when it wanted to get serious about Daytona sales in the late 80s and give it a big boy automatic movement, it couldn't do any better than the El Primero. And the bottom line is, the El Primero is still a champion thanks to new innovations like the striking 10th complication. Still a high beat movement, still a 52 hour power reserve, still a jump date, automatic winding, and as innovative as ever. The watch is staying ahead of the pack. Although 1969 saw the ancestor of this watch emerge as the first integrated automatic high beat chronograph, it's still regarded by true connoisseurs of high horology as not just one of the best looking, but one of the best overall chronograph movements for accuracy, durability, and total mechanical competence. Now, what I would say about this particular example is that because of the striking 10th complication, and you can see the characteristic blue skeletonized wheel that actually produces the step up in the rate of the hand, so you can actually see the step-up wheel on its own separate bridge right here. So visually, it's more spectacular with more going on faster and more visibly than in a standard El Primero caliber 400 or 405 flyback. And you have the characteristic Zenith finishing traditions enhanced by a partially skeletonized rotor. So although some solid rotors block out half the movement at all times, Zenith at least opens this one up a bit. So you can see the bridges, the screws, with their distinctive alternately bright shined and heat oxidized blue finishes. And the blue finish is Zenit's way of saying this screw is involved in adjusting the movement. The polished screws, those are there to fix the bridges, the plates, the levers in place. So if it's blue, it's used in adjustment. If it's polished, it's there to fix something in place. That's just Zenit's way of communicating to the watchmaker. It also makes for a kaleidoscope of color in combination with the golden wheels, with the violet pivot jewels, with the silvered rhodium, the blackened portions, and of course, the array of different finishings. You can see the straight grained levers. You can see the Cote de Genève on the winding rotor, and the unique use of perlage, not just on the base plate, but also on bridges and the balance cock. The caliber 4057, like its predecessors in the El Primero uh, continuity, is a feast for the eyes, and of course, for the ear, because when you hold it up to your ear, you hear that characteristic high beat cadence, distinctive, distinctive of one of the most famous chronographs in the history of high horology. And again, this watch being one of only 500 made, with a unique combination of materials, complications, a great history, and quite honestly, an excellent match of large watch and small wrist, if you are of that persuasion, you like the big watch, but you're worried about fit and feel with a big watch on a small wrist, this is the watch for you. The fact that it has so many other assets to its credit is just the icing on the cake. 
So check out this Zenith El Primero Stratos Flyback Striking 10th Limited Edition on our website, Watch You Want.